I see a few of you are logged in. Started the broadcast a little early, so we are going to start promptly at 7. So we have a few more minutes here. Feel free um, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Obviously, you found us if you're logging in and watching this. So go ahead and click subscribe. And if you want to share where you're from in the comment section, I'd love to share it with the audience. Hey, Sharon. Glad to see you here. And as an extra incentive for you all to participate, I can do this fun little thing where I can share your comments for everybody to see. So if you want to share where you're from, I'd love to share them with everybody. Nobody wants to share where they're from yet. Oh, we got an Australian in here. Hi, Sarah. Very cool. What time is it over there? What is it, 15 hours? 15? Nine a.m. in Australia right now. <laughs> I'm trying to set the mood for you, Sarah. I've got the lights dimmed. <laughs> we have someone from Fort Myers. Awesome. A little bit closer than Australia. So for those of you that are logged in, we're just going to do a couple more minutes. We're going to wait a couple more minutes for uh, hopefully a few other people to join. Uh, this is our inaugural virtual turtle walk for World Sea Turtle Day today. I see some thumbs up. Thanks, Sarah. Um, we'll give, um, we'll give uh, everybody a couple more minutes to log in. And then to reiterate, uh, feel free to comment in, uh, in the comments section underneath the video um, on YouTube. And I have this fun little feature where I can share your comments as we go along. This is an abridged version of our virtual turtle walk program that we will be um, offering this summer uh, from Loggerhead Marine Life Center. So we only have 30 minutes with you today, but our program is actually an hour long and starts this Friday. So more to come on that. But I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing some fun sea turtle information with you and really sharing this uh, experience with you. It's very cool if you've never seen it before. Okay, now we're getting some views. If you all want to share in the comments where you are tuning in from, that would be wonderful. We have Jupiter, Fort Myers, Australia. I know there's more. Alrighty, it is officially 7.01 <laughs> and I have a lot of information to share with you all. So I am going to go ahead and get started right on time. Those of you that are logged in, if you see any confused people in the comments and you want to set them straight, please help me out. <laughs> Feel free to comment back. That's really helpful for us. Oh, we got someone from Palm Beach Gardens. Hi, Deborah. All right, so welcome, welcome. Um, I, my name is Hannah Campbell. I'm the Director of Education here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. So I'm tuning in uh, with you all from Juneau Beach, Florida in the United States. 
Um, we do have some international guests here, which is pretty fun for us. And we are going to be talking about, uh, well, mostly we're going to be talking about the importance of the ocean and how it really connects all of us and, and why the ocean is important for our overall health. But um, to do that, we've used a really fun segue um, of the nesting process with sea turtles um, that hopefully will be a very cool experience for you all. We have some really neat permitted footage that we've captured uh, here in Florida of these awesome creatures and this really ancient process. Um, so those of you that have not seen a uh, sea turtle uh, nesting, today should be a really uh, fun and unique experience for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Happy World Sea Turtle Day, everybody. That is today, at least you're, if you are uh, in this time zone still, 16. Like I said, um, I'm tuning in with you all from Loggerhead Marine Life Center. Um, it is our mission to promote the conservation of ocean ecosystems with a special focus on threatened and endangered sea turtles. And we do that in a number of ways. Um, we do that through education, which fortunately you all are part of tonight. You get to learn a little bit about sea turtles, but mostly about why the ocean is so important to our health. Uh, through our virtual turtle walk program. We also have a rehabilitation department. So we have a state-of-the-art sea turtle rehabilitation center hospital here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Florida where we treat a number of patients per year. We have a research team that conducts many different projects, uh, mostly oriented around marine turtles and their habitats. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into that as the presentation goes on. And of course, conservation is in everything that we do. It's in our blood. Um, so be it conservation through research, rehabilitation, education, calls to action. We have a marine debris database that we monitor here with our conservation team. Um, we are all about uh, educating people on why the ocean is important and, and really connected to their lives, no matter where you are in the world, and, uh, and sharing with folks what they can do to help. So conservation is a big part of our mission. So I kind of want to, since this is, you know, I'm going to try and make this as interactive as possible. And I want to ask you all, what, what do you value about the ocean? So you're tuning in for a reason. Maybe you like sea turtles and you know that we're a sea turtle center and, and we can definitely uh, fill that love for you. But when we talk about the ocean um, as a bigger picture, what do you value about it? Is it recreation? Is it aesthetic? Food? Uh, or vacation? Or all of the above? Or maybe you just don't know. Why don't you go ahead and type in the chat what you value about the ocean, what you love about the ocean. And uh, I can share some of your comments on the feed, which will be fun for me. <laughs> all right, Deborah says, all of the above. Agreed? Anybody else like to share why you value the ocean? What you enjoy about the ocean? Think back to maybe a memory or if you don't have any memories with the ocean, that's okay too. What would you do? Um, why are you interested? Hello, Elena from Chicago. Elena says, recreation, vacation, aesthetic. Good. Sarah, it's home to all the amazing marine life. Absolutely. The love of the ocean sustains. Very true. You have some kiddos saying uh, fishing, vacation. Very good. So lots of... Uh, different reasons why we can uh, appreciate the ocean, but you know what we're going to talk about before we get into our uh, experience here with the sea turtle nesting is that sometimes our connection to the ocean isn't always obvious. We might use it um, for these reasons, recreation, aesthetic, food, vacation, but sometimes it's hard to realize that the ocean is actually very important to our everyday lives. Um, so we like to say here that the sea turtle tells us the health of the ocean and the ocean, the ocean tells, us, tells us the health of the planet. Um, and it does it in a number of ways that we kind of take for granted, at least most people take for granted every day. Um, for example, phytoplankton 
tiny microscopic organism, plant organism, produces over 50% up to 80% of the Earth's oxygen. So do the math and every few breaths you take, guess where it came from, right? So breathing, even simple as breathing our everyday lives, the ocean really plays a critical role. You think about uh, evaporation. Um, when you think about the water cycle, you might not think about water storage. Well, the ocean covers about 70% of the Earth's surface. That's a lot of water that's being stored um, on the planet. And 86% of global evaporation comes from the ocean, meaning that that rainfall, that critical fresh rainfall that we get, about 10% or an important amount of it comes from the ocean and that evaporation that's occurring across the world. So even things in our everyday life, the ocean really plays an important part. So where do sea turtles come into play? So all over the world, sea turtles are around. Um, they're threatened, endangered. We protect them and conserve them for a reason. We'll talk about that as we watch a uh, mother lay her eggs and nests on a beach tonight. Um, but sea turtles play an important role all over the world, whichever species you want to focus on, whether it's hawksbill, leatherback, green, loggerhead, Australian flatback for our folks tuning in from Australia, and the Ridleys, uh, Kemps and Olive. If you want to type in the comments what turtles, what sea turtles you have in your area, if you know, that would be great while I kind of go on here. So the question is, where do sea turtles come into play as far as the health of our ocean and, and really the health of our planet? Well, we can start by asking ourselves, well, what is a sea turtle, <laughs> right? That's important to know. So a little facts about sea turtle take you back to, uh, take you back to grade school. They are air breathing marine reptiles. So they do have to come to the surface to breathe air. They have non-retractable flippers. That means that when they're scared, guess what they can't do? They can't hide in their shells, right? They're pretty exposed out there to predators. Um, they have modified bills, beaks, um, for uh, depending on the species, depending on what niche they fill in the ocean and what they eat um, is a big pressure on, on the shape of the beak. Um, they also have magnetite crystals that have been found um, in their heads, in their skulls, in their brains, and it helps them navigate all over the world using the Earth's magnetic system. So pretty remarkable animals. They're vertebrates like us. That's something we have in common with them. You can see here in the presentation, you can see that backbone. This is a radiograph of a sea turtle. You have the ribs coming off of here. Of course, sandwiched between two shells that we don't have, but. And those, uh, those shells are called carapace and the plastron. The carapace is the top side of the shell, the plastron is the bottom. So I see that some of you are uh, tuning in here saying all around the world, geez, we have loggerheads and greens, few leatherbacks, leatherback, loggerheads, greens. We have some folks in Hawaii, there's green sea turtles, loggerheads, leatherbacks. Somebody, Sydney, tuning in from Hawaii, doing research, research on green sea turtles. Fantastic. Right. So we have a little bit of an understanding, right? Um, what is a sea turtle? Where they live? Found all over. Well, the sea turtles play a critical role to keeping the ocean and coastal ecosystems healthy. And these is, this is just a handful of the ways that they do that. And I'll kind of go through a few before we get into our uh, virtual turtle walk experience. So one of the ways is controlling habitat. So maybe through your schooling or if you are a kiddo tuning in and you're schooling right now, you're learning about uh, the food web um, or how every organism really has a place in the ecosystem that's very important. And if it weren't for that, um, organism, things would be very different. Well, one of the ways it would be very different if sea turtles weren't around is let's say the hawksbill. The hawksbills eat a lot of sponges. Sea sponges um, are in constant competition on uh, coral reefs, uh, near shore reefs uh, for space with corals, right? So if hawksbills weren't controlling some of that sponge growth and, and some of that habitat manicuring, um, then we would have a very different looking reef system, uh, maybe a little bit less biodiverse. 
we can say the same about the green sea turtle down here who's munching on some seagrass. Um, they, uh, we, we kind of joke here uh, that they're kind of the lawn mowers of the ocean, right? So without them cutting back that seagrass, maybe that seagrass bed comes inhabitable um, for other uh, uh, invertebrate animals or other animals that, that really uh, depend on some of that space being trimmed up. They also nourish beaches. So sea turtles are very unique in uh, the fact that they are marine animals, meaning they live in the ocean, but they lay their eggs on land, which is what we're going to be uh, witnessing in just a couple minutes. So we call that nutrient transfer. So you have this pretty much fully marine animal that comes on uh, land, terrestrial environment for a little bit of its life to lay, lay eggs if they're female, right? Um, and those eggs, believe it or not, they provide a lot of nutrition to, the, to that terrestrial environment when they break down and biodegrade and decompose. And the beaches might just look like sand to some of you, but there are a lot of organisms that rely on that habitat. So um, that nutrient transfer is very important. They're also an essential food source. A lot of people don't like thinking about this part, <laughs> um, but they are a very important uh, part of the food web, right? Um, those hatchlings, they have a lot of predators. Um, one of the uh, primary adaptations of marine turtles is to lay a lot of eggs, and we'll see that in our, in our uh, experience tonight, right? And uh, naturally, they do that because they know, well, they know that uh, there's a lot of uh, sea turtles that, that are food for a lot of predators, especially when they're young and they're very small hatchlings like this size. Okay. And then there's the food web check and balance system, right? So you see a, a, a turtle up here eating a jellyfish and another down here um, eating another soft-bodied squid animal. And what they're doing is, you know, they're predators too for a number of prey items. So without them, you know, what would happen to that prey item population, right? It would be vastly different if, this, if these animals weren't in the environment. But when it comes to humans and it comes to us, what we really value in sea turtles is the fact that they are an indicator species for us. You know, we don't live in the ocean and we don't see what happens in the ocean um, firsthand all the time. We don't, we're not marine animals. So when these sea turtles are um, coming up and they're washing up, they're stranding because they're entangled in nets, like you see over here, or perhaps they've had a harmful boat interaction um, accidentally from one of our from one of our boaters or uh, maybe they ingest some pollution right uh, debris that has made its way into the ocean from a land source or sometimes even an offshore source um, it's important that we know that these things are happening and that we're affecting marine life this way because if we didn't have an idea um, of some of these impacts it could get much worse and we couldn't uh, spend time finding solutions So they show us some of these injuries, and these are some clips, uh, some images from our sea turtle hospital here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. You can see there's a hook injury here, some fisheries impacts. Um, we have a boat strike here, we call a harmful boat interaction. And oftentimes these things, right, even this uh, plastic ingestion, these microplastics, so all of this plastic came out of the belly or the, the, the gut of this uh, small sea turtle, this post hatchling. And, you know, these aren't intentional injuries, right, from humans, but it's important that we see what our effects are, what our unintended effects are on these animals, because it can really shed a light on some things that we need to change. So with all that said, and we know that sea turtles are important, we've come to you today on World Sea Turtle Day to really show you a special process that's been happening for millions of years. It's, a, it's an ancient process and that's sea turtle nesting. So, so I'm going to try and set the mood for everybody. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this on. All right. I got my red light on here. Okay. And if wherever you are in the world, whether it is Australia or the US or Hawaii, why don't you shut the lights off if it's not nighttime? and pretend like it is, we're on the beach, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're 
having a minimal impact, right? And then and we we don't want we're fortunate to be able to offer you this virtual um, turtle walk uh, experience right now because this is a process we want to remain untouched, right? We don't want to uh, interfere with this pro with this process. So by getting this footage and and bringing this to you today, uh, we have no impact and we can learn the maximum amount of information. So we're excited. All right. So from here, feel free to comment. I want to let you enjoy the video and watching uh, the process, this really amazing process. But as we watch, please uh, type into the comments and I'm just going to do my best to narrate. So what you're looking at now is a uh, loggerhead sea turtle mother laying her eggs. So she has made this incredible, uh, strenuous journey, you know, back to her natal nesting beach. So that means that uh, sea turtles return to nest on the same beaches that they were born on, give or take a few miles. And it's pretty incredible. Um, researchers, uh, there are a lot of research projects looking into what those factors are. Um, but think back to those magnetite crystals that we talked about in the beginning and maybe you'll have a clue. So they're swimming around in the ocean and they emerge and they, they crawl up onto the beach, which if you can imagine uh, being in the ocean, you're a lot lighter than you are on land. So it's quite strenuous. And they craft this perfect nest that's safe uh, for the eggs that they will deposit and later cover, which we're going to watch. So I'm getting some questions here. So anyone wants to know how long does it take them to lay their eggs? So it depends on the female. Um, depends on where she is in the nesting pro in the nesting season. So sea turtles will um, will lay multiple nests nests per season, and sometimes they have more eggs to drop. Sometimes they have less. Sometimes they have energy because it's earlier in the nesting season and sometimes they have less energy because there's a lot of fasting that happens in the nesting season. So it all kind of depends. This experience tonight uh, with all of us together is going to be about 12 minutes, which is a uh, accelerated version if you are uh, an actual sea turtle doing all the work. So Bet wants to know, how many do they lay at one time? Great question. Um, you can see, oh, right there, you can see that several eggs do come out at once, usually in twos and threes. And you can see, if you look closely, those contractions that are happening, that muscle bringing those rear flippers out as the eggs come out. Elena wants to know, do the eggs ever crack while she's laying them? Uh, well, fortunately, uh, sea turtles, and I shouldn't say fortunately, it's actually a, a, an, ab an adaptation. Um, they have a, a softer uh, material that the eggs are made out of. So if you think of a chicken egg and you think of a sea turtle egg, it's, it's a very different, um, uh, different look and a different feel. And that's because they have to drop so far from the cloaca, which is um, this organ here. And down into this nest, which can be quite a ways. So that, that softer, almost rubbery um, shell is helpful um, for that. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> it is like a dented ping pong ball. It's a really good, uh, really good analogy, Jeremy. So you can see here, um, this is a zoomed in shot of the cloaca and you can see those eggs dropping. The cloacal opening is actually located near the tip of the tail. So this bit here is actually the end of the tail. Um, and this expands and uh, enlarges during the, uh, the deposition process, which is what we're in right now. Uh, they do lay multiple eggs at a time, Danielle. You can see those eggs being dropped. Now, the size of the egg varies on the species of the turtle. Uh, 
typically larger the turtle, larger the egg. So if we think about leatherback sea turtles, which is the largest um, of the sea turtle species, those eggs are going to be a little bit smaller, just smaller than uh, let's say a tennis ball would probably be the best analogy. Whereas these guys are gonna be, um, these eggs are gonna be around a ping pong ball size. I hope all of you have your lights off for this. It's because lighting is very important um, when we do our research. You can see that I have an amber light on my head today and all of our researchers use amber lights, red and amber lights, uh, which we call sea turtle safe lighting um, when they conduct their research. You see sea turtles um, over evolutionary time, they've um, evolved to have quite a different uh, vision than us and on the on the light spectrum they see a very different range so white light is actually very um, detrimental to sea turtles and when they come up onto the beach like this um, to lay their nests it's critical critical that um, there is as little uh, artificial lighting around as possible meaning street lights um, especially unshielded lights No, we're getting into focus here. <laughs> now, if you have a guess on how many eggs she'll deposit per nest, or if you know, type it in the comments. We'll see how close you get. I have no prizes, but we can give away bragging rights. Eighty to one hundred and twenty. Good guess. Hi, Ashley. So now we'll, we'll keep the guesses coming. Keep those guesses coming per per nest, and maybe you even want to get very, you know, creative and and maybe even go by species. Do all species have the same amount of eggs, right? So what you're looking at now, folks, is uh, the next stage in the nesting process. So after this mama sea turtle has worked real hard to deposit her eggs in the egg chamber, she's going to pack that sand that she had previously excavated, right, from the chamber back on top of the eggs. So we get a lot of questions here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. Um, well, what happens if I'm walking down the beach? I mean, I, I know that there's sea turtle nests on the beach and am I harming them in any way? Well, the short answer and the simplest answer is probably not. Um, uh, maybe if there are some umbrellas used, which we'll we'll talk about in a little bit. But as far as your your walking, no problems at all. She does a really great job, and you can see it here as she kneads the sand with these rear flippers. She is really packing that sand in very carefully. Okay. She wants to make sure that there's not a lot of uh, gaps. Uh, in the clutch. She wants to make sure it's nice and packed so there's no risk of um, damage. She's taking care and she's kneading. It's amazing how dexterous they are with their rear flippers. Um, if this is a process you're seeing for the first time, you can, you know, share your, your uh, thoughts in the comments because I remember, uh, you know, my first time seeing this, this process was actually through a very similar education experience as you guys are having with us today. And I was shocked that they use their rear flippers almost like we use our hands. Um, you know, they, they, although there's, there's skin, there's, there's actually digits back there and they can, they can use them quite dexterously, which is pretty, it's pretty incredible. All right. So I have some guesses on the egg counts here. We're seeing everywhere from 70, 55 to 150. Well, I got to tell you, you all are, you all are right. Um, so depending on the species, there's a different number of eggs. Now for loggerheads, we say anywhere from maybe 80 to 120 um, here on our beaches. That might vary, you know, depending on, again, the mother. But other species have as little as maybe 40 or 50 and as many as, you know, pushing 150 or even up to 200 for some of the smaller species. So it really does vary. 
So Francis, how long does it take for eggs to hatch? Um, is it dependent on species? Great question. Um, the incubation period does depend on a number of things. Um, a little bit by species, yes, but also by environmental conditions. So um, how hot is it during the incubation period? How cool is it during the incubation period? Is there rain that's been um, occurring during the incubation period? Um, but the vast major majority of nests will incubate for about two to three months, somewhere between there. My light keeps falling. <laughs> It's worth it. <laughs> so you can see her now, she's taking a rest. And I do wanna note that all of this footage, and you can read it there in the bottom corner, um, but this is important to note, all the footage was acquired under a uh, permit issued by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Um, we are so happy to be sharing it with you today, but we do not encourage anyone to be on the beach at night, in fact, if you do want to do right by the sea turtles, um, we want to actually avoid the beach at night and let this natural process happen. So you can see her moving her rear flippers here, um, really packing in that sand. You can see your front flipper starting to move just a bit. She might be going into what we call the camouflage stage. Francis says, is it in every species that the temperature surrounding the eggs determines the gender? Uh, yes. So uh, it's called uh, temperature sex determination. So, um, or temperature dependent sex determination, excuse me. So uh, yes, temperature plays a critical role um, in the development during incubation, whether or not that hatchling is going to develop as a male or as female. How deep do they bear the eggs? Well, funny enough, it depends on the mother, right? So it depends on how uh, long those rear flippers are. Um, when they, craft that egg chamber, they're using their rear flippers to excavate that sand. Um, like I said before, kind of like we would dig a hole with our hands um, pretty expertly. So depending on the length of the flipper, that's going to determine the, uh, the depth of the clutch. Uh, sorry, the, the depth of the egg chamber. So now you can see our mama here, mama loggerhead is using her front flippers. So we've moved from really kneading that sand down and filling that hole to using some of the front flippers to do what we call camouflaging. So if you remember, uh, if you tuned in for this whole experience, you remember me talking about uh, their critical role in the food web, right? We don't really like thinking about that, but uh, they do have many predators, those little hatchlings and the adults as well. Um, but even on the beach, there's terrestrial predators. There's the yellow crown night heron. There's uh, the ghost crabs. There are um, in the morning, uh, maybe if in the early morning when they're emerging from the nest and they're all working together to come out of the nest and, and crawl to the ocean, there's all sorts of seabirds, shorebirds um, that are out there looking for that food source. So, um, she wants to camouflage very well, which is what you'll see here uh, with her front flippers. If I can get my mouse back, here we go. With her front flippers here, because not only does she want to cover maybe her tracks for visual cues, but she also wants to cover the scent um, of those eggs. And for anyone that is tuning in that has done any sea turtle research, you know what scent I'm talking about. So here she is returning to the ocean. So she has made this long journey back to mate. She's made it offshore. Uh, she's, a, she's crawled up from the beach, crafted an egg chamber, deposited her eggs, packed them down very carefully to protect them. And now she returns to sea. And if you notice the way she crawls, it's actually a pretty important part of um, what our researchers in the morning look for when they're doing their, uh, what we call nesting survey, nest uh, index survey.
It's true. Tim says it amazes him that the little hatchlings will eventually hatch and make their way up to the surface after being buried uh, down deep in the sand. It's true. They're very resilient. And you can actually see even with this mother, you know, she just went through this laborious process. And uh, she tackles those waves like it's, you know, or the surf like it's no problem. Uh, we've seen sea turtles, uh, you know, when they're uh, coming up to nest, go through escarpments that are very tall. So they are they are pretty resilient creatures. So I do want to give special thanks to Wild Shutter Imaging, helped us acquire uh, the footage used in this experience for World Sea Turtle Day, and also, of course, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, our state agency here in Florida, that uh, permits us to do this work and help conserve these species. So I hope you all enjoyed this. It certainly isn't over. I would love to take some more questions um, in a little Q&A here. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to Type them in the in the comments. I'll take my light off now. <laughs> Do turtles live in coral reefs? Absolutely, Danielle. Uh, they uh, they use the coral reefs as a food source. They use it as habitat for resting. Uh, we as as di you know divers have a little bit of a joke that sea turtles use this. If you can't see, if I can't see you, you can't see me kind of mentality and they'll stick their faces kind of under these ledges, these natural occurring ledges on the reef. And it's quite funny to see, but it's, it really uh, serves as a shelter um, for them against predators like sharks. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> and yeah, I did get rid of the light and happy world turtle day, everybody. Um, so this is just a premiere um, of a new program that we are launching, this virtual turtle walk program. It does start this Friday, and it is much more uh, uh, in depth than we had here today in just a few uh, short minutes, like a half hour. Um, so you can find more information on our website. It's uh, marinelife.org. And I will see if I can't write that in the banner. Maybe. Uh, marinelife.org. So you can go to this website and you can check out some of the virtual programming that we have, either uh, whether it's this uh, virtual turtle walk program or some of our virtual learning uh, experiences that we have as a free resource. So we will be uh, conducting these every Friday and Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm so glad you all enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something and enjoyed World Sea Turtle Day. You're very welcome. I will continue to take any questions. We still have about 50 folks watching. So if you have any questions, let me know. Do we know how far they come? Pat wants to know the sea turtles when they come up to nest, how far they've traveled. Well, um, around the world, we typically see sea turtle populations. Um, so uh, they're kind of broken out into these regions that they tend to inhabit. And while some species of sea turtles do migrate quite a long ways, um, uh, in, in some cases uh, uh, across an entire ocean, um, we tend to group them in by population. So uh, here in our neck of the woods in the Northwest Atlantic, we'll see sea turtles that will uh, migrate and travel uh, into the, the Gulf, from the Gulf of Mexico in that area where they're maybe foraging or in some species where they start and begin their life all the way up the Eastern uh, seaboard um, and then into the uh, Northern Caribbean as well. So these uh, sea turtles, whether they're mating or foraging or nesting may do so in, in, in different areas of our, of our region. Oh, I think Amber had a question about my lights. <laughs> I'm so glad you all enjoyed it. I'm getting a lot of great feedback. You're very welcome. Um, again, we're going to be hosting these, except a little bit more comprehensive on Fridays and Saturdays. You can check it out um, at our website. I'll put that up one more time. Uh, 
And so Enya wants to know, uh, I've seen nesting states marking a nest really far up the beach. Do sea turtles ever nest all the way up by the dunes? They do. Um, in, in our neck of the woods, the, uh, we call it, well, we call it resource partitioning. So when sea turtles come up and they nest over time, they've really uh, partitioned the areas of beach of the different species at different times along the nesting season, uh, what parts of the beach they'll utilize. And the green sea turtles in our uh, in our neck of the woods tend to nest very close to the dune line. Um, in other parts of the world, uh, you may see hawksbills nest all the way up in in um, maybe even mangrove, uh, uh, black and white mangrove sections, and they like to utilize uh, a more densely vegetated part of their nesting beach. So it's very interesting. All right, to wrap up, a couple more questions here: Is the turtle population strong? Um, so. We are, firm, we are firm believers here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center about conservation optimism. Um, while there is much, much work to do, uh, we are seeing a, a tide being turned, so to speak. And in our, in our um, area here in the Northwest Atlantic, we are seeing positive population trends. So our research team does conduct research uh, uh, meticulously every year. So, and we've been doing that for over 20 years. Um, so we can have a, uh, long-term data set that we can really analyze trends over. And what we're seeing for the most part is positive. Um, however, unfortunately in our leatherback population, it is in decline. So um, this is why it's so important to reach uh, and educate people is because there's a lot of things that individuals can do um, that can really uh, turn that decline into, into a, a positive. But overall we are seeing some great progress and we're seeing a lot of awareness um, but we have a lot of work to do. Oh, Pat, so happy, uh, came to our center here in Juneau. <laughs> we are very lucky to work here. Um, Elena was asking how long does it take for the eggs to hatch? I had mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's about two to three months, depending on the species and the, and the nesting conditions. All right. Very. This is great, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy World Sea Turtle Day. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, one more time, I'll put our website up here, uh, marinelife.org. <laughs> marinelife um, you can go there and you can learn all about our virtual programming that we have. So no matter where you are in the world, you can share with your friends and your family um, that we have some experiences that you can take part in. And starting this Friday is our first full virtual turtle walk program where we will do a lot more elaborating on the importance of um, the ocean in your life, the ocean for your health, um, where sea turtles fall into um, that. And then of course, uh, some really great uh, footage and a sneak peek of what that nesting process, that ancient process is like. So. We look forward to uh, seeing you all hopefully again soon. And thank you so much for tuning in.